Hello, everyone, and welcome to Alchemy Speedtech Crack Injection Demo. My name is Charlie Lerman, also known as the Grout Geek. I'm going to be demonstrating a flexible hydrophobic product that we use for crack injection. I've got our demo block right here in front of me. Um, and what this represents is uh, a concrete wall and a concrete joint. So right here, I would be on the inside uh, of a basement or a subgrade, parking garage, whatever you like there. This, if you would imagine with me, would be the soil side. So this is the positive side where the water is coming from. This is the negative side where you're standing. And then this plexiglass represents the concrete that would continue out right towards you. And the interface between the plexiglass and the concrete, that's going to be our joint or defect or crack that we're going to go ahead and grout there. So I'll get more uh, to, to back to this in just a moment. But we're also going to talk about the pumps, the equipment for it, and hand, how to handle those. So we use a Titan 440 airless paint sprayer um, as our uh, delivery method. There's basically only two modifications to it. One is that we take the filter out and just put a plug there, uh, so the filter's just completely gone. It's been deleted. The other thing is we don't use a spray gun. We have our injection gun that we put on here. This is a high-pressure ball valve that connects to a Zerk connection. So for those who are not familiar with what a Zerk connector is, it's a typical grease Zerk connector, but you see we have a four-inch uh, uh, four by half-inch diameter packer. So this is considered a half-inch mechanical packer of four-inch length there. You can see I already have it installed in the side here. Typical crack injection, if your wall is one foot thick, and in this case, ours is one foot thick, you pull off your defect half the distance, which is six inches in this case, and drill at a 45-degree angle. This forms an isosceles right triangle, and you can see here that we have then intersected our crack joint or defect right there in the center. Liquids are lazy. They're going to take path of least resistance. So if we'd come in straight from here, the path of least resistance is to come right out. You'll see through the demo, when I come in this way and start from the center, it has to travel out and usually gets to the back side just as it's getting to the front side. And so we end up with a full depth repair in there. So let's, let's get back to the pump and, and get things started here. This product is water activated. We, we really... Um, you have to have water for it to go off. So we have a water pump that we can pump the water, but also um, typically you do this while you have active leaks, and that's really the, the best for uh, waterproofing. So we've got our pump here. We've got our, uh, this is our cleaner, right? Yes, all right, we've got our cleaner. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna pour a bit of cleaner in here because right now our pump has oil in it. When we leave our pump for a couple weeks, couple months, we, uh, we flush oil through it. Later on in the training um, uh, video here, you'll see how, how the, the cleanup, and we'll talk about that in depth. That is a great question. What do we do for uh, safety? Well, as you can see, we're handling chemicals. I've got gloves on. I've got all my skin covered here. Grout does stick to things, as you can see. And I have safety glasses on. Those are really the, the main concerns there. The, the product is uh, potable water rated, so it's inert, non-toxic. But uh, I didn't cover, we don't want to eat the product. But if you eat the product, you've got other issues going on there. So uh, that's usually not a concern. It's very easy to keep out of your mouth. It's a little grout geek humor. It'll be spiced in throughout the, the demo for you. Um, so I've gone ahead, and you see we just have our regular suction here. And I've got that down in our cleaner. Good practice, anytime you use a chemical, Go ahead and close that back up and wipe your threads. And you know, when you think about it, you actually want to wipe your threads and then close it up. Now, with the cleaner, that's not that important, but it's a good habit to get into because if you don't wipe the threads and you have that for the F400, it's going to be very difficult to open next time. So, airless paint sprayer, standard thing. They've got this valve on the side so you can prime it. I typically don't like to use the prime line, even with the cleaner, because what happens, the grout is water activated, it'll take the humidity out of the air and also go off. So if you're gonna be grouting all day and you use the prime line, you're gonna end up with grout in your prime line and potentially clog it up. I don't like to use those. As a pump gets older, sometimes you do need to use it, but these pumps are, are, are great, and we'll see right here, this should self-prime. So for safety, I always dial the pump all the way down. I'm going to open up, and I point at the side of the bucket, 
and I'm going to go shoot into my trash bucket because we currently have oil in there. This does say trash, yeah. So there we are, and you can see there was a little product in here, but not much pressure. So I'm shooting towards the side. I've got my pump dialed down. Look at that, I turned it on, nothing happens. That's what we want. I'm gonna dial my pump up. And this way I have full control. Now we're pumping a little bit here, but if you notice my hose is starting to jump, that means I'm priming. You hear that little burp? There we go. So I've now primed my pump without using the prime line. So again, I'm shooting to the side here. If you wanna come and zoom in here, you can see we've got a little bit of oil that's coming out. Again, we keep shooting to the side so we don't splash. So you can see the cleaner's clear. The cleaner with the oil, obviously looks like it has some oil in there. Now, neither oil or cleaner will react or do anything to our product to set it off there. You're good. Um, but we don't wanna pump oil in, into our ground. So we make sure we're nice and clear there. So what I'll come back is I'll research just a little bit. And that's all I need to see. It's just nice cleaner. If I saw that I still had oil, I need to flush some more. So I'm good to go, my pump is primed. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my pump all the way down and I'm going to relieve the pressure. There we go. That's just a good habit to get in there. The other habit I like, and it's not necessary at this point, but I'll cover it here, is to have an extra packer on hand. And whenever you're not using your, your gun, go ahead and put that packer in place there. What happens is your grout, even when you try to wipe that, can get in the teeth of uh, this grout coupler and clog it up. But if you put this packer in there, you still may get foam around there, but it won't clog it up. Those are little things. You, know, you can swap this out, that's only five minutes, but it slows down production. So it's little tricks like that that help keeping the, the job moving forward. So we do, we have our pump prime. We've got our product over here. This is a one component product. So why am I holding two, two components there? Well, it's a one component product because it doesn't go off till it sees water and it's pumped with a one component pump. But all hydrophobics, um, single component hy hydrophobics actually have a activator. So here's our activator. It's our general ACC or gen ACC. So what I like to do is I like to shake these up a little bit. Some of our mixtures, some are solutions. You know, I, I don't want you guys to worry about, well, which one's which? Do I need to shake it or not? Just go ahead and give it a shake. You can't hurt. These things don't go bad, but if they get really cold, or if they've sat for, for a time period, they can stratify sometimes. And so just shaking them up, not even vigorously, just like this, you're good to go with that. So let's go ahead. And if we were out in the field, we would want to prepare and get all ready. We're not going to go in depth on the, the whole minutia of crack injection. This is more just a demo of the product for you here. We have other videos that, that go into detail in the theory of crack injection. But you want to be ready to grout before you mix your grout up. It's really a bad thing to show up, do a bunch of stuff, and then right before lunchtime, mix your grout, go to lunch, and then come back. It's just it's not good, good practice there. So how do we mix our grout? Well, we take a five-gallon pail. And I, line, I like to line it with a garbage bag. You can mix it with a, a paddle, but really what it comes down to on job sites, typically you don't have a clean bucket out there. And so when you ask a laborer to get you a clean bucket, what they do is they will find a dirty bucket and they'll wash it out and, and you know, clean it out with a rag. Well, we have a water-activated product. We don't want that. So if we take a garbage bag, we know it's nice and clean, we can put that in there, and we can also use that for mixing. So instead of me just talking about it, Let's go ahead and start with that. So I've got my air vent over here that I've already break and broke my foil seal on. And I've got my grout. Now, I've got a highly calibrated eyeball and I'm gonna pour about two and a half gallons in here. Why two and a half? Well, for the demo, I just barely need anything. But normally, it's good practice out in the field. Mix up about two and a half gallons, two gallons. I've even seen some contractors who like to just mix up one gallon at a time. But uh, I like two and a half gallons. It's an easy range to work with, and you never know what's gonna happen when you start injecting. The other thing is that I'm gonna start off with half catalyst. You can do 10%, and you can do 5%, or any ratio in between there. This is not like an epoxy. If the epoxy A and B don't mix right, you've got a mess there. This. The more activator we have, we're at 10%, it's gonna go off the fastest it will, whereas if we're down at 5%, it goes off slower. Typically for crack injection, we wanna start off going slow 
because we want our product plenty, plenty of time to penetrate. If we have high flows or very cold water, we may want to increase the accelerator. But again, with that, we, we go more in detail when we talk just uh, specifically on the theory of crack injection. So I poured my product in, I wiped my threads, put my cap back on. If you notice, I'm sweating. I'm trying not to sweat inside the uh, bucket there. All right. So here's my activator. So normally, one of these to one of these, because you know I said percentages, and you're probably, well, how do I do that in the field or whatever? Am I going to weigh it? Do I do some ounces? Yeah, so some people get a little container and, and measure the exact ounces. I just, just like to look at this. Well, I poured half of this in there. Now, I only wanted half. So here's the real math I'm doing. Instead of using half of this, because I only used half, I'm going to use a quarter, all right? We also get questions sometimes on how come the level's a little different. Here in Georgia, depending on time of year, it can be hot or it can be colder. And depending on where we ship it, the volume may look a little different. But it, it turns out it's, it's packaged by weight and not by the exact measurement on there because your bottle can change shape a little bit. So I just take a look at that. And again, I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to go down to right about the 1,400 millimeter mark there. Wow, look at that. Oh, nope, just a little more than, or a little less. I thought I hit it perfect. All right. But again, if you're off in ratio a little bit, it just means a little faster, a little slower reaction by a few seconds. It's not a big deal. So how do we mix this? Sure, I can get a wooden stir stick, or I can get a, a mixing paddle and do all that. I don't like to introduce anything into the product there, because it is water activated. So there's my garbage bag. Just reach in there. And I reach in and I use a flat hand like that. I don't want to use fingers because I don't want to poke a hole in the bag. And I give this a good mix. So the garbage bag does a couple things for us also, besides keeping the, the trash bag, or excuse me, the, the bucket um, clean. It also lets us use a dirty bucket. I've even used cardboard boxes to hold our grout when we were in a pinch and didn't have a, enough buckets on the job site. But the other thing is that when I'm pumping, I can wrap this around just like this over the suction. So if I'm in a dam gallery or somewhere where water's spraying or it's raining, I'm not getting rain into my grout there. And that helps out a lot. The other thing at the end of the day that it helps out a lot for is the little bit of raw resin that's left in the bag, just go ahead and throw some water in there, turns into foam, and disposal of that's just like throwing out a seat cushion. So there's no state, local, uh, federal type authority that is worried about you disposing of foam. As opposed to if you try to dispose of resin, there's a lot of different things you have to do. So a cured product, like I said, is very easy to dispose of. All right, now that I have completed mixing up the, uh, the product here, we're going to go ahead and test it. We're going to do a cup test with this. So I've got some water. I've got my grout. Pull my glove on a little better there. All right. So how much did we, water did we say? We said it's about 4 to 7% water by volume that's going to kick this off. So here we go, I've got my grout, grab my thing. Grout is always a bit messy there. Wipe this off. And again, I'm being careful not to sweat or drip in there, which sounds kind of silly, but you're on job sites, sometimes th that happens. And also, like I said, we, we can use this plastic to keep rain or, or whatever else we need to, the water to keep out of there, keep our product nice and pure. All right. So I got my water. Got my stir stick. I'm going to pour my water in here, and we've got a timer ready and going. Let me go ahead and pull that in. And that's probably well over 4 to 7% by volume. Now I'm going to mix this aggressively. The, the reason being is normally in the wall we have a small profile, and, and so, so it's very easy to mix. In this case, uh, water is always lighter than, than our grout to start off with. And if I don't mix this aggressively, um, the water is just going to sit on top and mi not mix with the grout. We don't have that problem in situ because of the profile. But I will continue to, to mix this and we'll watch as this grout starts to foam off. Now, this is not an aggressive uh, expansion grout. This only has about a, a four, five, six times expansion right, right in that area there. And I think we're getting close to already going off. There you go. So, so we're already starting to expand there. Uh, so we've got, what? about 25, 30 seconds, something like that. That's our gel time. And I was saying set time, I use those a little interchangeable, but that's our gel time, because if you notice, it's still tacky. Uh, so it's not, quote, set up. But that typically will stop our water. Now, 
there may be some people out there going, well, I've seen other grouts that expand a lot, lot more and just, you know, a lot more exciting looking, that kind of stuff. That is totally true. We have grouts that are made exactly for water cutoff and to fill voids and stuff like that. But this is designed to be, it's a flexible grout designed to go into a crack or a joint. So it doesn't have near the, the, the uh, fast reaction or the, uh, uh, the, the foaming that, that you classically see and people like to demonstrate. We know we've got a good product here. We know that it's going off and it's gonna continue to go off a little bit. While it does that, I'm gonna go ahead and move over here. And actually, let's zoom in real quick here. And if you take a look, Oh my gosh, it's going off in the bucket. What do we do? No, that's completely normal. The grout on top, it's taking the moisture out of the air and forming a skin across the grout. That's gonna be normal. We're gonna stick our product or you know, our hose right down through there. We don't really wanna pull that skin off because it's just gonna do it again. But every once in a while, you wanna pop that skin to look down in there and see how much more grout you have left to pump. So I'll move this right over here by the pump. And we had already primed the pump beforehand. It is depressurized and turned all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And I'm just gonna shake this a bit where I just don't have our cleaner just rolling out. Little drips are fine. But I'm gonna go ahead then stick this right in here. And if you notice, I'm not going to use our prime line, all right? I'm not a big fan of the prime line. I'm not saying you can't use it. And there's many contractors that do. This is a preference. So I go ahead and remove my port. I got my trash bucket right here. And, and it seems silly, why does he have it cleaner and trash? Until you really start using the, the trash a lot, it sometimes just looks like cleaner. So it's important to label those because if you start sucking out of your trash bucket and you have water, that, that's game over for you. So it's, it's important. So again, I'm going to open. A Little bit came out there just and I point toward the side. Our pump is on, it's dialed all the way down, and I'll start pumping. So let's listen to our pump. We hear it going, but it's not doing much yet. I mean, that's just a little stream there. You hear that click and start? Look, the hose is starting to jump. That's it self-priming, okay? So that, that hose will jump, and we'll get a little burp over here when the air makes it through. And probably as we get to, to sucking up the grout, the grout's a little thick, there's our burp. The grout's a little thicker, so we may hear the pump slow down. Look at that perfect timing, like I've done this before. All right. So, we go ahead, and we're good. That is a grout stream there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut the valve. So we are fully charged. There is pressure in this pump, and I do have the line pressurized. Normally, if I had any pause or time period, I would go ahead and, and just uh, dial the pump down and depressurize. But instead, I'm gonna go ahead and go straight over to my port that I already have installed on my 45 degree angle. And I've made myself a nice mess here, so I have to be careful, because I have put in my suction hose over my, my grout gun. All right. I'm doing Mr. Rogers, I'll come sit down with you now. So, we're almost ready to inject. The first thing in the field is you would inject water. Now, for the demo, we've already injected this, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So let me go to my water pump. Look at that, it looks very similar. Actually, we use a little lesser pump for, just for the water cost saving purposes there. Uh, many contractors do that, but it's the same injection equipment. It's important that you roll on. When I say roll on, you come from a side and roll on. Well, there we go. So, you don't also wanna pull straight off of these. I mean, it's supposed to be clamped on there. So look, I give that a tug, it doesn't wanna come off but check that out. L look how easy that comes off when I roll it. So that's important. You get a lot of the big guys out in the field and they're just fighting with the thing and they tear up this tip. So again, I'm gonna roll on and I'm gonna pump water. Remember, water's lazy. So we're gonna see a circle here that is affected by gravity. So we'll see that initial circle and it'll start to sag down. And there we go. Now, if you notice, in our joint here, we didn't actually get water out to the area where we would have seen. It, it was down a little below and maybe right down here where we'd hit the floor or something like that. That's typical because this, honestly, we would consider this a pretty wide joint when we're doing crack injection. Um, so, so that's normal because, again, water's lazy. It's gonna travel down. Again, I roll, take it off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my pump off. This is a good practice, so I'm not gonna be using my pump for a bit, and depressurize it. 
That way, if anything happens, that's just a nice safety measure there. We don't have a pressurized pump laying around. All right. Now we're ready. We've got our grout charged over here. As you can see, our foam has completed its process. It looks nice. It's nice and fluffy. Um, while that looks really pretty, that's not what we're shooting for in here. We want a compressive and, and mechanical seal. So you, you'll see during this demo the, the difference in the foam production when it goes off in compression. So again, I roll on, I'm on. Let's go ahead and focus in here. So we know our port is right here and we can see some of our fresh water that we just did. So I'm gonna open up. You can see how our grout's coming out around there and moving up and it's slowly building up. But look at this, it's going out the back side of the wall first and so we would never know that. That typically would be going in soil but now there I've seen my grout come out the front of the wall first. So you understand there's a lot going on in there that we don't know about. So let's watch this. Look, we're getting some production of foam. You can see the, the white going off. And look, it's gravity draining right now before because we, we've lost our pressure and we have a wide joint. Remember, we're not pumping anymore. And we had our set time, and you can see it's already starting to go off. And again, no stir stick. Remember, we talked about that profile difference when we're inside, inside the joint. So look at our production. But I want you to focus on what's actually happening. If you see, we're starting to expand now and we're pushing in and all these little black dots, that's carbon dioxide. That's what this, uh, this product's a pre-polymer and that carbon dioxide is forming and trying to form these larger cells. But this is closed cell as well as this is closed cell. The difference is the carbon dioxide, look right there, that's perfect. It's being pushed out. But when it's doing that, remember, we only saw grout down here. Look how high we got grout coming up here now. So these are important things to, to watch for. All this stuff we can't see going on in there, but you can find it's found its path leash resistance is to keep pushing. So it's pushing the, the, the uh, newest grout still out. It'll continue to go off and seal all this up, but you can see we've come up the top and, and how far we've moved in the coverage we got. And of course, we always like to make a mess when we grout, at least I do. So um, again, there's the bubbles, there's the carbon dioxide. We haven't been pumping now for what, 30, 40 seconds or something like that. This is all product production. This is stuff that even when you do a live demo that's out in the field, you don't get to appreciate what's actually happening inside the wall there. We don't know. So we, we get three types of bonds and everybody's always concerned they focus on the adhesive bond. And some people say, well, and, and it's true that hydrophilics have a better bond than hydrophobics. But you know, that's one of our weakest bonds because if you think about it, what kind of surface prep do I do in, inside there? Well, it's just pumping water. That's the only surface prep we can do. But we're achieving also a mechanical and a compressive seal. You can see how it's pushing. It's gonna chase any honeycombing. It's gonna chase any shadowing behind rebar. It's gonna go into any of those defects. And basically we're getting a built in place custom gasket that is full depth, full 12 inches there. And, and how do we know that from this side? Well, since we start off with our Sausalese right triangle start in the center, we can make the assumption, and it's not always 100% correct, but if we see grout come out the front, it traveled six inches from the center, ideally it did the same. Now you may have a little tighter than, and oh my gosh, maybe we got a 10 inch gasket, not a 12, we don't know. But you know, honestly, a little one centimeter line straight through would stop the water. So this is all extra belt and suspenders. We're, we're, we're not gonna have this leak come back. Um, and, and if you want, this is a great time to rewind the video about a minute so you can see the dramatic difference, boom, between what we got right here and then uh, our, uh, and what we started off with. That's F400, you can see it's still continuing to go off a bit and um, that is normal and that, that'll continue for, for, for just a, a little while while it finishes sets, sets up. So while this finishes up its process, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to clean our pump. So this was a nice easy job. <laughs> So while we're cleaning, uh, this will continue to go off, but by the time we're done cleaning, we're gonna come back and we're gonna unbolt this and, and see what the difference is. Remember I said adhesion is our weakest seal. Just keep that in mind. All right. So, right now, we have our pump. It is charged with grout. What did I do wrong here? Anybody been watching from the beginning of the video pick up what I did? When I was done, I was focused on talking to you all. I forgot to put my packer in here. And you can see this is starting to get a little foam around there, you know, and it didn't go off bad, but a lot of times on job sites, something happens or your grout travels six feet and you forget about this and now you've got five minutes extra to go ahead and, and change this out. 
That's another thing. You want to have extra couplers on site so you don't have to spend the 20 minutes cleaning this. These aren't bad when they get grouted, but they do take a little while to clean. And when you're out there, sometimes doing shutdown work, you don't want to mess with that. All right. So, trash bucket, cleaner. So how much, great question, how much cleaner do we typically use? About a gallon a day is, is normal. You could use a little more than that, but, but normally a gallon's gonna get you through uh, starting up your pump and shutting your pump down at, at the end of the day there. So, I'm gonna go first off, turn this down, I'm gonna shoot to the side, I'm gonna open up, and I'm just depressurizing, that's all. So we weren't expecting anything exciting there. So we now know that we're depressurized. I'm gonna wipe my tip real quick, and let's zoom in. Remember we talked about that skin? There's our skin on top, all right? So no problem, I just pull it right out. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shake this a bit and wait until I, I get where I don't have a steady stream. What happens is if you have a steady stream and you go into your cleaner, you're gonna put a lot of grout that's kind of free floating in your cleaner there. So I, I don't like doing that. The other thing I'm gonna try to do is start pumping pretty quickly after I get that in there. So, let's go for this process. Move this out of the way. Go ahead. I stick this down in there. All right. I've got my trash bucket right here. Open. Shoot to the side. Dial my pump up. We see grout is coming out. Watch the hose. Look at that. You hear it? It lost suction for a moment. Watch the hose, the hose is gonna start shaking, it's already shaking. You're listening to the pump, you're gonna hear that little burp. So, if I had put a gallon in here, which I did, there we go. Um, what I'm gonna do is at the end of the day, I'm probably getting rid of this product anyway. So if you see we've got a suction, the, the little suction tip, the, the black tip there, I'm probably already nice and clear, okay? But I've already got this product out, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to the side. And I'm gonna pump it down so there's almost nothing left in there. Then I'm gonna come over and I'll recirc just to make sure you're nice and clear. <clears throat> One of the things that can happen is if you don't get all the grout out, you may not set up your pump, but you may actually have enough grout to start lining your hose and stuff like that, and you end up with a little plug and stuff like that. So it's just, this is very important. Um, there are people that they get concerned about, am I gonna grout my pump? It is science. Water has to react with the chemical grout for it to go off. The only way you grout your pump is by getting water in there. The only way you get water in there is by not following the, the proper maintenance procedures. So, I had a little trouble doing this by myself, so let me turn this off real quick. And I pretty much pumped down. So now, what I'm gonna do, and this will probably have a little air entrained into it. There we go, sorry about that when the maneuvering. But I'm shooting to the side, and we can see it does have a little air in there. But, what we can see is when we look down in there, that is product, or I could just wait for the, the, the froth to go away, but you can see it's nice and clear. There's no grout entrained in there. Our grout pump is now nice and clean, all right? So what we do is, we would, uh, we've already got it open, I turn it off, I dial it all the way down, we are depressurized, I close this. We have a closed system. Basically from our pump right here, all the way out to here, we have a closed system. That means that moisture can't get in there and that we've got our cleaner in there. So when we start grouting tomorrow, does that mean we're ready to go and we can charge it with, with grout? Well, no, because what happens is overnight, this is gonna be empty, all right? So you're our whole suction line, and if it's nice and cool and humid, you will get moisture inside here. And so what you wanna do first thing when you start this pump up is just take a little bit of a product, just like we have in here right now, just to cover the suction, and recirculate that for about 45 seconds to a minute. And that just takes any moisture that's sitting in here and moves it out. So, so that, that again is a best practice that, that you wanna do uh, for, for grouting there. Now, let's say we've completed our job, we're successful, we got paid, everybody's happy, the water's done, and we're not gonna do another grout job for another week. Well. Best practice is to go ahead and take a cheap cooking oil, a motor oil, a transmission fluid, whatever you want, some type of oil, and run that through your pump. So it'd be the same process how we just flushed the uh, grout out with, with the cleaner. Now we can flush the cleaner out 
with the uh, oil. What the oil does is it keeps water from getting into your pump because you've got something in your pump there, but it also keeps your seals nice and lubricated. So for storage, having some type of oil in there is, is, is the, the best practice. That is a quick run through of the uh, crack injection and the pump cleaning. So let's go and step back over here to our demo. And remember, we talked about the free foam. We're gonna look, this is the grout, so there's no Hollywood magic going on here. You can see again, we've got the free foam. You can see what the grout looks like right here. But let's see the difference. So, we talked about three bonds. What were those three bonds? One, adhesion, it sticks to stuff, we, we know that, all right? Two, compressive, it's going to squeeze itself into place, and we saw it squishing all those little black dots of carbon dioxide out. Three is mechanical. Now, with this demo, we don't have much of a mechanical because we really just have two flat surfaces there. And most of our mechanical is on the concrete side where you know, it has any of the, the little divots and pores and, and, and capillaries that you have in, in concrete, naturally. Um, but when you're looking at a crack or a pipe penetration or something like that, you've got a bunch of places that you can lock in mechanically on that. All right. So what did we say was our weakest bond? Adhesion, right? I might have to get the, uh, there it goes. So this is adhesion between concrete and plexiglass. And you can see how difficult that was to pull off. And you see some of it decided one side or the other there. But when we compare this exact same foam right here to how fluffy that is, and we start looking at it in here, it's nice and dense and rubbery, and that's what's giving us all our bond. You can see these are very tiny cells. And for a great comparison, look at that cell structure. See how large those cells are? Still closed cell, but when you compare it to what you're looking at inside the joint, completely different products. And if we could zoom in, like right here, see how that's nice and smooth? That, that's what it's going to do. It's going to reach into that capillary and uh, lock itself in mechanically. And you can see here we've even pulled off a bit of the, the concrete um, de debris and, and cementitious material right there. So we get a tenacious bond in, in concrete. I've also done this between concrete and high-density polyethylene. Again, we don't um, focus on the adhesion seal because most stuff doesn't st stick to the high-density polyethylene, but the mechanical and the compressive seal allow us to bond and stop those leaks. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope this was uh, everything you, you were looking for. And we've covered crack injection with a hydrophobic mixing of the product. We briefly touched on safety for uh, handling these materials and safe operating and maintenance uh, of the pump. Again, Charlie Lerman, Grout Creek, Alchemy Speed Tech.